Welcome back to part three of the Predictor Restore. In part two, we finished up the chassis, have it plain. We're going to turn our attention to the cabinet. As I talked about in part two, this cabinet has some rust here on the edge and down here, so I've decided to sand it down, repaint it. I've already taken the speaker grill out along with the front trim pieces that are on the grill. It's all on one board. Uh, those screws there held it in. Taking the antenna input off. It mounted right here with a couple of Phillips screws. So I'm ready to take this cabinet down to the shop, to my garage, and I'll do some sanding on it, get it ready to repaint. Just starting to paint the cabinet. We basically got it turned upside down. The feeder right here. Just take them up. They're riveted on and they're in good shape, so I didn't want to take them off. But I just put a first coat inside the cabinet. Uh, taped up the tube chart in there. I just wanted to get a first coat on the inside before I done the rest of the cabinet. Here's what I'm using. I primered the cabinet first with white primer. Used Rust-Oleum on it too. Uh, this is a warm caramel. And it's something different. So I painted the edges the bottom of the cabinet, inside the cabinet, around the perimeter inside. And then when I flip it over to do the, the part that really shows, then I'll, I'll paint the bottom of the cabinet in here, and of course the rest of it. And before I put this first coat on, I did use a tack rag to get the dust off of it. Probably put, probably just leave the one coat. That, that should be good enough for what I've already painted there on the bottom and the inside. But I'll probably put two coats on the, the parts you see, the sides and the top of the cabinet. And then once that dries, I'm gonna put some clear, get a little more gloss. Starting to clean up some of these cabinet parts and this gold ring seems to be just a plastic material. But see the difference there where I've cleaned it right there. And I have it there. So I guess it's just dirt. But it's it's definitely coming off and cleaning up and looks a lot better. Because I had new grill cloth ordered, I need to take off these trim pieces. So, see how complicated that is. This one I know is easy because you just bend those tabs. I've already, already taken it off. These I'm not sure of. I think they have retainers on the back. So, I have to look it over, figure it out. Well, after a bit of work, I've got all the pieces off. This was easy. And this trim strip was pretty easy and the Philco emblem wasn't bad, but this decorative piece that goes around the volume, on and off volume and contrast, it was crimped. There's the color. I just sprayed one coat on the sides, the top, and the other side, and the front. So I'll probably put one more coat of paint, then I'll put the clear over the top of that. With 
the, the new grill cloth have ordered. It's got kind of a tannish brown color in it, so I think it'll look fine. So one more coat of paint on the front and the top and the sides. And then we'll put the clear on and the cabinet will be finished. Cabinet is painted and got it up here in the basement shop. The decals for the controls, of course, I sanded them off. So I'm attempting to put them back. First time I've ever tried this. Here's what I'm using. It's called dry transfer decals. And I can remember these from years ago. You just rub, put the decal where you want it, in this case a letter, and you just rub it until it becomes transparent on the paper and you rubbed it onto the surface. So here's what I've done so far. And I think it looks pretty darn good. Done the brightness control adjustment. Here's where the controls mount. So. As you can see, I marked the center of the controls on the tape. And I'm trying to center each word on that mark. So I got to do horizontal or H O R I Z and then V E R T. So the three words are H A R I Z, horizontal, V E R T, vertical, and then of course brightness. All right, got the three words on. And let me hold the controls up here and show you. And I got them, I got them centered. You can see there. Turned out pretty well. A few more parts that I had to do something with here. Uh, the Philco emblem. Still looks pretty good. I cleaned it up and just sprayed some clear over the top of it. So that'll work. Those two screws go in the, in the top of the cabinet, mount the antenna input, the bottom. So I painted them brown to match the cabinet. And then this trim strip right here. It had a gold plating on it when it was new and it was flaking off, so I just cleaned it real good and sprayed it with some gold paint. And I think that turned out really well. Wanted to clean up this brass ring that goes at the base of the picture tube, mounts on top of the cabinet. And I've already been working on this side. You can kind of see the difference there. Here's the other side, what it looks like before. So I wanted to show you a before. And here's an after. I've basically just done from here to right in here. And I'm using a car buffer that I use. I've used this before when I painted cars to do a wet sand and a buff on the final clear coat. And then I'm using this 3M rubbing compound. This is number one, which is the most abrasive and probably all I'll have to use on it. They make a two and a three. Uh, the threes for fine polishing, twos just in between the two grades. So I'm going to go ahead and do this other side and and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. There's the finished product there after polishing. While it's not like a brand new one, it looks pretty good. I'm really happy with that. Cleaned up nice. Just, this just had a piece of masking tape across the wires 
the tape, of course, broke when I pulled the wires out, so I just put a new piece of masking tape over the top of it. But I have the base back on. Now I'm going to put the case together, and we're making, making progress on getting this TV back together. And did make sure that I had the video wire separated for being interference. And want to know how this ring mounts to the top of the cabinet? If you look, one of the holes is larger. There's a larger hole right there. Like that. The bolts on this hub are number 10. And with my X light and replaceable blades, there's just enough room for it to reach under there and tighten them up. And the last thing we'll do is recover this speaker grill, front grill. And here's the material I bought for it. And I'll turn it that way. So it'll look okay. It's not like the original, but it's not painted the same color as the original either. So I think this will be fine. So that's next. After being super careful prying off these retainers, off of this trim piece, they go on really, real easy. I just took a, my x light with a quarter inch blade and just push them on. There's what we've got so far. Still got to put the Filco emblem on. And this piece is ready to go back on the cabinet. Here's a look at the CRT with it all assembled. Did buy the new brass plugs that the fella sells for these. Cabinet's finished. CRT ready to go back in. All right, there's what it looks like. And as you predict, the guys know it'll swivel around. Now that the predictor is restored and plays well, we put it in our living room. This is just actually in a bookcase. Uh, just took a shelf out and it'll fit right in there. Good thing about these predictors, they're only about 11 inches deep, these table models are. And they'll, it fits right in there. And there's still room to swivel the screen. What I find amazing about the tuner on this predictor 
I have a blonder tongue agile modulator in the basement, which is right under where we're standing here. But the only thing I have connected to the antenna terminals on this TV is just a matching transformer. And I anticipated having to put rabbit ears on it, but didn't have to. Just a matching transformer attached to the two 300 ohm screws. And that's a picture that we get. So I hope you enjoyed watching the videos on the Predictor Restore. I tried to do something a little different. Most of the videos you see online are in-depth troubleshooting and replacing parts on the circuit board and a lot about that. Well, I tried to concentrate a little more on the cabinet rebuild and restore. And I hope you enjoyed that. Be something a little different. So thanks for watching. More videos to come, so stay tuned. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, and we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.